so yesterday I, I shared with you what I need to do for um, counselling to keep my professional membership. Coaching is a little bit different, but, but it's a similar sort of setup. So to keep my coaching membership, um, I um, need to do 40 um, hours every three years. Okay, now you might say, well, that's not a lot. Well, I guess it's not over three years, but um, it's something you just need to chip away. And again, um, for me, what I try to aim for, I try to aim for 30, between 30 and 40 hours a year for my coaching PD. Now, you might be saying, well, David, you know, can you use uh, your coaching PD, uh, PD's professional development, I might add, can you use your coaching PD for counselling and vice versa? Well, actually, I can't. That's a bit of a bit of a bummer, but um, coaching training is, well, coaching is different to counselling, um, and so I can't use it. So I actually have to do all that um, ex- different training. So what's the point of me telling you all this? Well, like I said to you a couple of days ago, that someone who isn't a member of a professional body doesn't have to do that stuff. I'm not saying that they don't go and do some training or learn new stuff or update their skills. What I'm saying is they're not obligated to do that. I actually have to do that to do it. And for those that don't know, um, I actually have the highest level of membership that you can have as a professional counsellor in Australia with the two uh, peak bodies for counselling in Australia. And for coaching, I'm a member of the largest coaching association in the world, which has about 28,000 members. And I have the second highest level of membership with that association.